Hello, I'm Fenwick Haas, William Quaker Dean at the Zicklin School of Business, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today to Zicklin Spotlight. Today we're pleased to have with us Charles Huang, who has an MS in Accountancy in 2015 from the Zicklin School, and he's an, also an adjunct professor teaching a very popular course in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. In his day job, he's the managing member at Lightning Capital Management Group, and he recently wrote an article entitled The Bitcoin Squeeze. Charles, welcome. Uh, thank you for having me, Dean Huss. It's our pleasure. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you got interested in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Ultimately, one day I decided I wanted to learn more about accounting and decided to go to Baruch and get my accounting degree. At the same time, I got my CPA and CFA during this time. Um, and really what I became fascinated about accounting was I wanted to understand financial statements. And I wanted to understand how it works and how to analyze it properly and also, most importantly, how to understand the financial footnotes. Um, so I used that knowledge to really delve deeper into understanding um, different companies and understanding which ones are undervalued and overvalued. So I know which ones, at least in my perspective, to buy and invest in. And I typically focus on technology companies. Um, as I was researching different technology companies, that ultimately led me to Bitcoin and discovering how Bitcoin technology works. And ultimately, one of the things I thought was really valuable is how it could really disrupt a lot of people's lives in a very positive manner, especially in developing nations. And this is where I really became even more passionate about this technology. Tell us a little bit more about Lightning Capital. How did you start in that uh, organization? In 2017, I noticed a shift in momentum of the different uh, sort of interest in this area. I would like to call it crypto asset area. And what happened during this time was I noticed that the media started to talk about it more. People are talking, and this is in early 2017, before the bubble run that we've witnessed. Um, and ultimately, I was working at Ernst & Young at the time, and I talked to one of the partners there. And I said, hey, I think this is an interesting space that's it's been changing. You know, I've been following it for several years now but I think it might hit this momentum mm -hmm. that's greater than what we've seen in the past. And I think there might be a business opportunity there. And decided to take the leap, ultimately launched my own fund uh, called Lightning Capital mm -hmm. and focused on trading in crypto mm -hmm. assets. Terrific, congratulations. Thank you. Also, I'd like to ask a little bit more about the course that you teach. Uh, tell us a little bit about the kinds of topics that you cover and in particular, what's been the reaction of the students? It's been, it's been two years since I've been teaching this course. Uh, we focus on, I focus on the high level aspects of this technology. So I'm teaching the financial, the economic, uh, the regulatory aspects of this entire space. This is a very multidisciplinary um, field. And so you need to understand, all the students need to understand different aspects of it. You recently wrote an article, The Bitcoin Squeeze. Tell us what that topic is. Ultimately, without going to extreme level of detail, mm -hmm. what's going to happen in April to May of 2020 is that there's a Bitcoin halving event. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the amount of Bitcoins will get halved from the current amount. So it goes from 12.5 Bitcoin for every 10 minutes to 6.25 Bitcoin. And so ultimately, what people have seen already in the Bitcoin halving events it leads to a bull run and then followed by a bear market. And what I've noticed was we clearly know what the supply schedule is on how much Bitcoins will be created, but no one has done the research on the demand side. And that's where my analysis goes into depth of what the demand is. The article goes into details on that demand side, but what's been fascinating to me is that the, the demand side has been increasing over the years. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next Bitcoin halving event in 2020 if it will lead to another massive bull run and a subsequent bear market, which could result in another 80, 80 to 90 percent down move in the market. Anything else you'd like to add before we close? One of the things I would like to add is that our world is changing at such a fast pace. We're really in the information mm -hmm. age. Um, and so it's so important to constantly learn about new technologies. It doesn't necessarily have to focus on technologies, but I think learning about blockchain, AI, and other technologies mm -hmm. is, is so important in this day and age. I always encourage people to 
study it about it because even if you are in a boring industry mm -hmm. you might get disrupted mm -hmm. by technology very good advice charles thank yeah thank you, you so much